Welcome you this morning to the Ministry Center. We're so glad you're here. And what a special day for you to be here, for it is Missions Sunday. And today, for this Mission Sunday, we are welcoming our, our good friends at the Gideons, who we've partnered with for a very, very long time. And so this morning, without further ado, I'll invite them to come and share today. Would you please welcome them as they come? I'll let them introduce themselves as each of them comes. Very excited to be back again this year. And last year I gave you a report, PowerPoint presentation on what your Gideons here in Lebanon was doing here locally. Today I want to do something different. So I had an opportunity to invite a guest from a long ways away. So it's my privilege today to introduce to you Dietmar Erler. Dietmar was born in Leipzig, uh, East Germany, uh, under the communist control. And uh, he was born into a family of born-again believers. His grandfather was a pastor of a church. And uh, this, uh, he grew up under very difficult circumstances, not persecuted Christians, but under very difficult, disadvantaged circumstances. At the age of 16, Dietmar made a public profession and trusted Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Um, he was... Uh, uh, graduated as an engineer at the age of 26 because of the educational problems living in under communist conditions. Um, and in 1990, um, the Iron Curtain fell, or the Berlin Wall fell, that separated East Germany from West Germany. And the Gideons in January 8th of 1990 were able to go there and organize the first group of Gideons in East Germany. Shortly thereafter, the uh, Germany unified as Germany, no longer East and West, but Germany. Uh, Dietmar was one of the very first Gideons in East Germany, and he served vice president of the local group of Gideons for about six months, and then he came president. Under the unified Germany, Dietmar Erler served 12 years on the national Gideon cabinet of the German Gideons. His wife, Martina, she also served with Dietmar as an auxiliary member, and she served on the German National Cabinet as the auxiliary president of the uh, German Auxiliary Gideons. So it's, uh, they have six children, 22 grandchildren, and uh, in July of 2010, uh, Dietmar was hired by the Gideons International our headquarters international being there in Donaldson, Dietmar was hired as our East Europe, Mid-East regional director, of which we only had seven in the world. He was one of seven. And in this position, he served mostly the former Iron Curtain countries, which made up of 25 countries that he was the regional director for. During that period of time, uh, those countries cover 11 time zones. The United States is four time zones. His region of the world covered 11 time zones. So it was a massive, massive area. He was responsible for some 700 volunteer groups of Gideons across those 25 countries. And so we're very thrilled and privileged that we have an opportunity today to hear Dietmar Erler come and share about the Gideon ministry there in Europe East. Dietmar, welcome. So greetings from the Gideons International and also from Germany. From Dresden, the home time I'm coming from. And Bill introduced me already so I'm serving now as a regional director for Europe East. And everything what I want to say is only for the glory of God. I am a murderer. I killed somebody. Told me Vladislav. As I met him in Yekaterinburg behind the Ural. And for this, he came 12 years into prison. But inside the prison, he received such a small book. It was a Russian New Testament. This is Ukraine. 
but a Russian New Testament, and he started to read. And he read from love and from forgiveness and said, God loves him. And it touched his heart. And he came to the last page, as you know, the plan of salvation, and he decided, I need repentance. I need Jesus. And he gave his life to Christ. He became a believer inside the prison. But later he became baptized in this prison. And he promised, whenever I will be free, I will serve the Lord my whole life. Amen. I met him after his time in prison. And he is now a Gideon and serving to bring the gospel to other people. God would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And you know the Gideons as business and professional men and going to the hotels and to the hospitals to place there God's word or going to the young people, to the students inside the schools or if not possible outside of the sidewalk those are both pictures from Ukraine, where it uh, was possible and is still depend from the situations in several areas. And to the universities, to bring it to the students, or to police and to firefighters. Everybody needs God's word, especially from those authorities. <laughs> to the military, to the soldiers, and to bring it into the prisons. A very, very important part. We had just uh, in the song, we had been prisoners. Not real, most of you not real, but we had been prisoners before the Lord. But I let me share some about prisoners, real prisoners came to face because the Gideon ministry so this is a small part in the world I'm serving now. Those are not more than 25 countries after we added four regions. Those are only seven countries now, but still 11 time zones. And a lot of camps, again, after the reduction now, over 700 camps in those seven countries. And for the glory of God, Almost 5,000 Gideons and 2,000 auxiliaries distributed during the last 33 years over 120 million scriptures Amen. to people in those areas. And then what happens? I personally met Alexei Panin. He's living in Khabarovsk. That's almost far east, close to the Pacific Ocean. He was a prisoner, and he was a strong smoker. And then the Gideons showed up in the prison, and they gave him a present. And he started to look, and he recognized, oh, that's so thin paper, oh, beautiful and no cigarettes. Oh, he put out and rolled cigarettes, and he smoked. He put God's word inside, but in a very wrong way. <laughs> but you know, God is faithful. His word will never return void, like it's written in Josiah. And he had still a portion Maybe a, a, a small portion. And his eyes looked in the word and he read something from love. He read God would love him. Never somebody had told it to him in his childhood or in his uh, raising up. So he continued to read. And he came to faith. He repented, became a Christian, a believer. Today, he is a member of a church. He is serving very active. I met him at a leading seminar. He is responsible for many camps in the Far East. You may observe the, the pen he even 
held like a cigarette, but he doesn't smoke anymore. It's only the pen. God is changing lives. Let me share from Andre. Andre, life started very hard. He had never seen his father. His mother died in prison as he had been six years old. So he came to Orphanat. After a few time, an aunt adopted him. But the husband of her was not agree. So it had been given a lot of trouble. And he, with 12 years, he flew away. He escaped. He lived on the street as a 12-year boy. How to survive? Stealing, robbering, very quick you come to cigarettes, to alcohol, to drugs. So he came to prison before he came, became an adult. During his life, he had been 17 times in prison and out. And then he said, no hope. Life makes no sense. I take suicide. And he did. But praise God, he was not successful. He damaged his health, but he survived. Awaking in the prison hospital, in the bed, the neighbor bed was a Muslim, Bakhtiar. He had a little bit similar uh, conditions. He took drugs and so on. They became friends. And they took drugs inside the prisons. I listen to it very often. It works. I, don't ask me how, but it works. They became friends. And Bakhtiar read every day in his book, in his Koran. But Andre had nothing. So one day Bakhtiar said, oh, Andre, I received some time ago a small book. I don't need it. You can have it. And the Muslim gave the New Testament to Andre. And he started to read. He did not understand very much in the beginning because of his low education. But God's word touched him. He started to pray, God, if you are real, let me understand. Show me. <coughs> and after a time, Bakhtia recognized and said, Andre, tell me what is written in this book. You are changed. Some habits you don't do. So, please tell me, or give me back, it was my book. And they both started to read together. Both came to faith. Both repented their sin, and he told me it was needed three days and three nights to tell everything to the Lord. They continued reading, other prisoners joined. Finally, 50 prisoners in this prison came to face. This is Bakhtiar. And Andre, after releasing from prison, started a small business. God blessed it. He needed a helper. Now he became a businessman with one, two, three employees. So he looked for the Gideons and joined. And as I met him, he was a camp president of the Sokolov camp close to Bishkek. With a big desire to go to prisons to give them the gospel what's needed. Since for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. And I met Andre. Andre in Moscow. Almost 20 years in prison. But the Lord saved him because the New Testament. This happens everywhere. Therefore, is anyone in Christ? He's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Let me share short from David. His father had been a boss of the gang in Georgia. Not Georgia, United States, the Georgia former Soviet Union. 
And David, as a young man, he wanted to become like his father. He was his model. But one day, the father gave to his son a small book. He said, I received. I cannot read, but you should read it. It may help you to become better. So the father gave this New Testament to the son David. It was some time later, some months, and the father was killed in any fight as a gang member. So David started to read, took it as a heritage. Today he's a powerful pastor in Moscow. He shares the gospel. And people become saved because God touched David. As Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Thank you for supporting this ministry. Thank you for helping that God's word can go until the uttermost parts of the world. Come with me to Vladivostok, Russia. And we had there a pastor's event. And the interpreter helped us to translate into Russian. He showed up with his girlfriend. That's not usual that the interpreter takes his girlfriend with him. But she wanted to see who are the Gideons. And then she shared her story. Nina, she was drug addicted. She was in prison, in a famous prison. And a guard gave her this camouflage New Testament. And she came to face. And she laughs a lot today. She's a member in a church. And she's not married with him. And she told us, I go every month, two times at least, in a famous prison. I try to touch drug-addicted uh, ladies and tell them the only chance is to get God's word, to find Jesus, and to get forgiveness. Amen. Or Natalia from Zictiv Car, also 15 years drug addicted, body damaged. Then, because this had been in a hospital, and besides the bedside, a New Testament. And she was touched from God's love as she read what is written, what we all know. But for those people, it's so important that they find God's word beside the place they are coming to. And so she came to faith. Some years later, as they became a member of their church, and the Gideons came and asked and, and told the congregation some samples and asked who wants to join the Gideons. Her husband, Dimitri, said, I want. Now Natalia is an auxiliary member, and she can go to those hospitals with the Gideons and place Bibles to people had such problems like she had. This is close to Vorkuta. I don't know if some of you remember Vorkuta and Alexander Solzhenitsyn, Archipel Gulag. It was famous in the world from Soviet. Some writer told what Stalin did. This city was so terrible. But today, it's a blessed city. We have a Gideon camp. Those are three people who came to face, I want to share short, Vladimir. He found the book in the garbage container and he became saved. Or Galina had kidney stones, came to a hospital, found a New Testament. She had so much pain. She read from Jesus, from healing, from his love. She started to pray. And after some days, the next ultrasound, the doctors had been astonished. Where are the kidney stones? They had been gone. God had healed her. Praise God for what he is doing. 
And so she, uh, she turned to Jesus. She uh, believed and is now a strong believer. Or Sergei, a young man, he received it in the school and later took it to the soldiers. And he is now a Gideon as well. Or also Vitaly, touching history. I met him in Siberia, drug addicted over very many years, over 17 years. He said, my life was destroyed. And then a Gideon on the street, because some eye contacts, we have always some personal in us, he said, I want to give you a personal present. That's what Gideons can do. They pay for it, and they can give it as a personal present. I want to give you this or such book. He told me, I don't know why I took it, but I did. And he kept it long time with him like a, a mascot, like whatever. Later he started to read and he came to faith. And he came to a church like yours. And he found a wonderful lady and they beloved. God has some humor. He is very... So, this lady is a leading uh, man in the police department to catching drug addicts. <laughs> but she beloved in Vitaly and they are now a wonderful couple and serve the God. <laughs> Praise God for Julia and Vitaly. Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. I need to look to the clock, not to be too long, because Sergei will also have a few words, and then I have the second part. So very short. This is Anatoly from Ukraine. Now, now I'm coming to Ukraine. And Anatoly was also inside prison. He was, in the, uh, he was one of the strongest prisoners. Everybody was afraid before him. And he came to face because the New Testament and God changed him. He stand in front of a church as he told his testimony personally. And then he turned his head and said, Gideons, each inmate in each prison needs this word of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please support this. It's so important. Like Mikola, also he was in prison. So many prisoners, now free. God is working. Yes. And there are hundreds, there are thousands I could tell you. I don't want. It's too much. But Mikola from Alexandria, he refused to get it. He did not take. The Gideons came again after some time and again after some time. After the tenth time, they approached him. He started to read. And today he's a saved and blessed man in the church and is even a Gideon. You did not chose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and be a fruit. Young men, starting soldiers, need the gospel. Sometimes we need the, the chaplain in Russia, or this is Ukraine, the Orthodox chaplain, to open the doors. And we give this camouflage New Testaments. And you know, since one year, since something over one year, you are doing this. Please pray for Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine was such a fluent Gideon ministry over the country. Those had been the picture from 2014. At this time started the conflict. You may remember Maidan and Kiev. This is a fighter. He reads, reads a Gideon New Testament. And at this time it was already tried. I, copied this map from the news from this time. It's in Kyrillic, in Russian, Novo Russia. This had been the plan this time, but had been not possible. Finally, they took the Krim and the east part, Donetsk and Luhansk. 
But God keeps always the control. This had been the airport from Donetsk, October 2013. Scripture blitz to go in all schools, universities, in the prisons, in hospitals, over 100,000 New Testaments had been given during five days in Donetsk. I had been a part of this blitz. God knows 100,000 Testaments in the, people, in the hands of people. And a few weeks later, the conflict started. A few months, this is the same airport had been. We don't know, we will see in eternity what God is doing. But God's word will not return void. And you know, just in February last year, from three sides, Russian troops entered Ukraine. And now Sergei will continue. A few minutes. This is Sergei Gula from Ukraine, from Bila Tserkva. He's a lawyer from profession. He's a devoted Christian, the whole family, and see, he serves as a, a field representative in Ukraine. And even God uh, chose him to have more responsibility in the country. Now we need to look. Can you give the signal? So, now you can continue. Greetings to you, my dear brothers and sisters from Ukraine. We have now a big tragedy. No one maybe in two years ago can say that we will have war with Russia. We are a very close country and nobody thought about this. And even for the several days, a lot of mocking about that it can be war. But war started. And uh, I remember very good when it was the day when uh, missiles and bombs laying not far from your house because we are living not far from here very bomb laying and my wife asked what is happening and I cannot imagine that I in ever in my life say this the war started it was weeping it was crying And uh, we asked God what we shall do in this way. And a lot of Ukrainians go abroad as uh, refugees. And I am thank you so much for United States that receive a lot of Ukrainians. And we prayed and I prayed. And God said, you should stay. I have family, now I have wife, four kids, four children, two parents in a pension. Should we stay? Yes, we should stay. We have all to go out. Cars, fuel, money, in even American visas and friends who ask it, will you come? We should stay and after several days we understand why we received 12 refugees and started service in our house in our basements yes this is my father-in-law and a lot of uh, unbelievers came and also be with us and each of them, we gave New Testaments. And maybe two or three weeks after 
the five of them received Jesus Christ. Amen. And it was uh, Gideon's New Testament and uh, some of uh, them uh, told us that we cannot sleep when this book we do not hold even in the under pillow. And uh, now we have a lot of work in our country because I can say, dear my brother and sister from United States, this is time of salvation for Ukraine. And also because of you. And uh, I all time understand that uh, God give chance. And even for me today, God also gave chance to stand here that I can say thank you very much for you. Not because of this is right, not because this is ethically, but this is what I have in my heart. Your work is so big for us. You, we have today very strong song, thank you very much, about Valley of Shadow. We have such Valley of Shadow in Ukraine. And uh, you know, even Jesus Christ, when he had take the cross, he prayed and asked to help him, disciples, in pray. He needs it. And we need so much for your prayer. And I thank you very much for you, dear church and church, in the United States, in other countries, that you prayed for Ukraine. And that's why we still stand. That's why God's work continues in Ukraine. And I also want picture, this one picture, that we, uh, after a lot of uh, areas, were released from troops we started to buy uh, products and take New Testaments and go to other people and place next. And can you imagine, people lived for weeks, several weeks, even months, simply in uh, basements or other bad conditions without heating without uh, bread, without waters. And one of the men, when I uh, give him uh, some pillow, some breads and other and New Testaments, and can you imagine, he told me, you know, this New Testament, what I gave him, it is more needed now than even pillow of bread. And it was for me very shocked because this is an unbelievable person. But now a lot of Ukrainians understand that they need Jesus Christ. Yes. And you know what I have to say to you, dear Americans, dear brothers and sisters. This is much better to go Christ, to be with Christ to develop strong relationships with him when you're in good condition, when you do not have war, and let God bless the United States that this land do not know in the future what does mean war, and you know this. And it is very important what you can do to, to help such has need and this is important in spiritual need. So I can say that nearly two million New Testaments were given to Ukrainians and we have a lot of, a lot of stories about salvation. And this is your part also. When Dietmar told us a lot of the stories you have to know that you have in this testimonies big part. So, 
As a Ukrainian, I would like to say in all my heart, thank you very much for your generosity. Thank you very much for your prayer. Thank you very much that you still help us. And I believe that a lot of people came to Christ also because your donations. And I also pray that how it's nice when you hear in the morning, pray God bless United States of America. Because we are very far. Where is Ukraine? Where is United States? But, but in hearts, we are close. Thank you, dear brother and sister. Let God bless you so much. Thank you. Peace on earth and healthy is important. But eternal life. That's more important. And even we see all those destructions, and I don't, I go quick over. Important is that people come to Christ. So this is a house of prayer. It's a church. The house is destroyed, but the church is alive. Come at other places. I received from Odessa, from a pastor. So many people come to Christ. We need to build another hall beside, since the church is growing. And even this happens, even a sixth part of all the people flew away to other countries. And another sixth to the west part of, the, of Ukraine. And then around Ukraine and the other countries, the Gideons, they prepared, they welcomed refugees and gave them God's word. As Sergei said already, inside and outside around, roughly two million of refugees received God's word. Let me go very quick a little bit before, since the time is going on, what is important also to pray for Central Asia? I want to have the focus also of this country. This is Kyrgyzstan, over 90% Muslim country. But you see the joy in the eyes of the lady. It was the waitress at the lunch, received the New Testament. It is a very special country and very poor. And things are so different to United States or Europe. If you go the streets, uh, you see the cars. But God changes lives. Abdrachmanov raised up and received such a New Testament. And he changed his life. This testimony I want to share as, <coughs> as the last one. I would like to kill them all as such Christians told me, Samad, I call him so, his original name I cannot say, a former Muslim. Such religion has nothing to do in our country. But then God's word hit me at a place I never expected, he continued. He went to Bishkek on a, build, on a construction place and he went to the toilet. This is a wooden box. And there was no paper, but it was a nail in the wall. And at this nail, somebody had put a book, and the people took the pages. So he took one, but his eyes fell on this. And he came to face. He repented. He gave, as a former almost radical Muslim, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. 
He is now serving, he is one of them, <laughs> for protection, not the face. He is now living in the south of Kyrgyzstan to share God's love with the Muslim people that they will have salvation. That's God, the power of God's work. Pray for Tajikistan, another country in our area. This is a brother in the church. Don't be afraid. He loves the Lord. And our Gideons share. Or play, pray for Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan, also a country. We pray that the next scriptures will come in. This is not so easy like in your or our countries. And the plan of salvation can touch people. Many in the world have not yet heard his word. Let me go. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. You know the Gideon ministry all over the world. And you see where are the biggest needs. And many received God's word. But millions have still not yet heard. They need Jesus. They need God's word. And may I ask you how much time we will have? Do you know? Nobody knows. Only God's the Father. And nobody from us expected three years ago that everything will be closed. And so such pandemic came. So are Gideons giving God's word even under those conditions. This is in South America. Or to the military. Or in Africa, to the schools as it started to become better. Whatever happens, God keeps the world in his hand. Nothing is outside of control. And we can read, as the disciples asked Jesus, sitting at the Mount of Olives, and ask him, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the signs of your coming on the end of the age? And we had just a talk in beginning with one sister. What happens all in our time? And you know there is so much what happens. Natural disasters, wars, tsunamis, floods, horrific things. We all know. But Jesus said, first, this will be only the start of the end. There will come persecution, and we can see in the world more persecution on the believers than ever before. But then Jesus gave the right words. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Matthew 24, 14. And then the end will come. Brothers and sisters, we are close before. Internet, Bible apps, the Gideons just passed 2.5 billion scriptures. We don't know how much time we will have. But when we look to the figures, how Bible translations are growing, so only in the last 10 years, in 800 languages, more people can receive God's word as 2012. There are still a lot to do. God knows. And we need to see the signs of the time. So the question is 791. The question is, Will we use the time? Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will not pass away. 
So what can we do? Pray. Please pray for all those countries, for the people. And your offerings, we said it already, we are so thankful. Each cent counts. And if you're a business or professional man and want to join the Gideons, please ask your pastor. Speak with him. Jesus said, we must work the work of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And all only for one goal, to win souls for Jesus Christ. Him be the glory. He is the King of kings. And we are only his servants. Thank you for serving with us together as Gideons and the church. God be the glory. We thank God for all that the Lord is doing through the Gideons. We thank God that we get to be part of that through your support this morning. We thank God for all of that. Here in just a moment, Pastor Scott Davis is going to come and dismiss us in prayer. I'll tell you more about him next Sunday. We'll have an actual prayer of installation next Sunday. Uh, I want to give the time today to, to our brothers at the Gideons. But before Brother uh, Scott comes, I just want us to pray for our brothers. If you would come, I just want us to pray as a church. I think that'd be fitting, don't you, to ask the Lord's blessing upon our brothers at the Gideons. And then Pastor Scott will come and dismiss us with prayer. If you would, just stand with me over this house this morning. Just point your hand towards them if you would. We're just going to pray together and ask for God's blessings upon our brothers. Father, we come before you today, and I thank you, Almighty God. I thank you, O oh God, for the work that they're doing for your kingdom. How your word, O oh God, is going forward and touching hearts and touching lives. And Father, I ask right now for you to anoint our brothers and use them, continue to work through them for the glory of God. God, I thank you today for what they've done, but I pray, O oh Lord, may more souls be reached than ever before. Use them for your glory. Keep your hand of protection upon them, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.